Hey guys and welcome back to the main phase. Today I'm bringing you another deck's profile. This profile is for a deck that's actually legal in NR only or peasant format, which we play sometimes on our Discord server that's in the description below, but it can also be adjusted slightly to be good on ladder. I'll suggest those improvements at the end. So without further ado, let's jump into the deck profile. So the deck I'm showing off today is Yusenju. Uh, Yusenju is a control based wind archetype that focuses around returning your opponent's cards to the hand. And it's got most of its cards available at, at common or rare, so that's why it's been seeing some play in that type of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the cards. So we've got three of each Yusenju Karma monster. Each of these has, uh, has the effect where if you normal summon them, you can immediately normal summon another Yosenju. Except themselves. Plus, they all return to the hand in the end phase if they were normal summon this turn. And most of the other Yusenju low levels have that same effect. So, uh, first off, we have uh, Karma 1. Karma 1 uh, lets you bounce an opponent's card if you control another Yusenju monster. This can be good for getting rid of certain FUD gates, like, for example, uh, Secret Village of the Spellcasters, for example, might be one that you might want to get rid of with this specifically. Uh, then there's Karma 2. This one can attack directly, uh, but the damage is halved. This is really good because if your opponent has, like, something, say, like, 300 life points left and they've got a big monster, you can just normal summon this and swing in directly and that will prevent them from, you know, uh, just walling up. And then we've got free Karma 3. This is your main searcher in the deck of the... Uh, other than the training grounds. Uh, this, whenever another you send you inflicts battle damage to your opponent, which could be the Karma 2 attacking directly, uh, you can add one of the you send you cards from the deck to your hand, and this is like uh, the way you can get to all your other cards, including stuff like your training grounds. Uh, then we've got two Shinshu L. Uh, Shinshu L is either protection if you normal summon it, which you can do off the other's effects. So if you have, like, at the end of your chain, if you've done all three, you've done one, two, and three, then you can uh, normal summon a Shinshu L to protect your board. Uh, but mainly, in uh, if it's in your Pendulum Zone, it can protect your Yosenju monsters from battle or card effect destruction, which can be something like a Torrential, for example, uh, which can be quite powerful, especially since Torrential is one of the best cards in the format right now. This probably could be taken out if you're just going into rank doors, in my opinion. Uh, then we've got three Yosenju uh, Sujik. Uh, this is part of the newest Yosenjus, and these don't have the effect to normal summon on normal summon, but they all have multiple effects that you can only use uh, each once per turn. So, uh, Sujik has the effect where uh, if it was normal summon this turn, they all still have that effect where if the normal summon they thing. This one acts as like a battle trap where, but like a battle hand trap where you can discard it if your opponent's you send you is battling another, if your you send you is battling another monster to make that you send you gain a thousand attack points into the end of the turn. And if it's on the field, you can just target a Yusenju and give it a thousand attack, which is even better because it doesn't make the Sujit go away. It can also do the attack to itself. That's something that can happen. Uh, then we've got one Sabu. Sabu is pretty okay. If you're searching it, then it's probably useful. You can, If it's normal summon and you control another Yusenju, so if you normal summon it off, say, a Karma, you can search the Shinshu L. Uh, plus, you can target something. For example, the Shinshu L, shuffle it into the deck, and then you can place one of the tra trading grounds or the whirlwind into your spell trap zone, which is quite, uh, which is the only way to actually search the whirlwind. Though I don't think it's an amazing card. Uh, you can't actually, no, you can't search the trading grounds. It's another card that's not in the deck. Then we've got free Yusenju, Yusenju Inza. Inza is a way to protect your monsters if you're pro against a deck that would probably use effects on normal summon, like Solemns, for example. Uh, and then if you normal summon it, then you can just draw a card for free. It's, it's pretty okay. Uh, one use you Mizak. This one, if it battles a non-wind monster, you can just destroy it at the start of the damage step. And if it was special summon, you can protect your hand. You can tribute summon this off the effects of the Yusenjus, which is quite powerful. Plus, there's another card that can special summon it directly from the deck later. Which is actually the next card here. That is Yusenju Magat. Uh, Magat, when it's normal summon, special summons any Yusenju from the deck. And this probably would be somewhat like... For example, you could you could summon and permanently keep on the field something like an Inza 
or a subject or even like a karma free to then search some cards it's quite powerful it can also summon the uh mizak but the mizak will return to the hand that's important to know uh, then we've got Dimensional Fissure. Dimensional Fissure is a really good floodgate. Uh, there's other ones you could run in this deck, like Skill Drain, for example, but uh, Fissure is just good because Fissure makes it so that it, any monster is banished instead of sent to the graveyard, but all your use is return to the hand instead of going to the graveyard, so they are really affected by that. Uh, and your opponents will probably be playing a graveyard deck such as Drytron or Tri Brigade, and that, this will really ruin their plays. Uh, we've got free Yusenju uh, Training Grounds. Uh, this makes it so that anytime you normal or special summon a Yusenju and all the effects are based around normal summoning or special summoning, uh, you can place a counter on it and then you can remove three counters to add a Yusenju card from your graveyard or deck to your hand. And this can be any of the monsters, but it could also be uh, a sword sting, which can act as an interruption on your opponent's turn. Then we've got two Whirlwind. Uh, Whirlwind is another trap. It's not a Yusenju card, that's important, so you can't search it off a lot of the effects, but... You pay 800 to play it, and then uh, if you control your Senju and it returns to the hand, in, mainly in the end step, uh, you can return any of your opponent's cards to the hand, which, depending on what it is, probably like extra monsters, so they can't replay it afterwards. Uh, we've got Triple MST. As I always say, the, this is a budget deck, so MST is just a fine uh, spell trap removal option. If you've got better removal, such as Cosmic Cyclone or Lightning Storm, I would run that instead, especially Lightning Storm in this deck, because you will... You will remove all your face-up cards from the field, except maybe like a training grounds or something. Uh, and you could run those instead, but for a budget play deck profile, I always put in MST. Uh, then we've got uh, Triple Forbidden Chalice. Forbidden Chalice is just a great uh, card in general. It either uh, makes a monster gain a 400 attack, and then it negates its effects no matter what, but like... It can be either used to like make it so that you can edge out a battle with something like a Karma 2, but otherwise might not be able to beat over someone with like 2,000 attack. Or you can use it to sort of uh, make it so that you, instead of uh, them using their effects, you can just negate it. Uh, they've got Triple Torrential Tribute. This is great card in general, but it's extra good in this deck because uh, your monsters return to the hand in the end phase. So then if they summon a monster, you can just Torrential and blow up the entire board. Uh, one compulsory evacuation device, it's just a good piece of interruption that also synergizes with some of the effects. You can also use it to bounce your own Yusenju, such as, uh, to trigger Whirlwind on their turn, which is kind of useful. Uh, then we've got Sword Sting, and Sword Sting, uh, if you control no monsters, you reveal two Yusenju, up to two Yusenju in the hand. It's basically like another compulsive uh, compulsory activation, evacuation device, but you can only target your opponent's cards. Uh, it's really good. Uh, the, they also have a card that negates monster effects, but that card isn't. Uh, that card is an SR. I'll suggest that later. Then for the extra deck, it's mostly filled with generic rank fours, and that, uh, and then the link monsters. There's firefighting Darumadol. This is only really useful uh, to remove your opponent's problematic spells or traps, like uh, which is a similar use to say MST. Uh, but it's just, uh, just a body. And then the, uh, we've got the, uh, I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce that, the Desperate Doom Eagle. Uh, and this means that you can just sort of remove, interrupt your opponent's graveyard, and also it lets you gain, get a big attack point monster of, like, 4,800 if you manage, if they have no monsters in the graveyard. Uh, which can be triggered with something like Dimensional Fissure, for example. Now, for some upgrades I'd suggest to this deck, uh, firstly, Utopia, Utopia, I would suggest you run a Utopia and then a Utopia Double. And Utopia Double is really good because you can directly add the uh, Double or Nothing and then you can go for an OTK uh, by swinging for 10k. You can't attack directly though. Uh, and uh, this engine is really good because the deck just naturally puts uh, two level 4s on the field. And if you're in a position where you can win with Utopia Double, uh, then it's just a good uh, option to have. Uh, as for other things... Uh, I'd also suggest that you might be want, to, want to add the Yusenju secret move. This is a uh, negate if you uh, control at least one Yusenju card. This can just uh, mess with your opponent's plays, uh, sort of like Forbidden Chalice. And this is just a really good card in general. The other option for this deck is to run like Pendulums and stuff, but I don't think that's as good of a, a, good of a way to play the deck uh, as playing it with the... 
focus being on just normal summoning and control. So anyway, thanks for watching this deck profile. Uh, I'll try and get some more content out later in the week. Uh, and bye.